question time. Up next, we have the welfare position. And firstly, could I invite Claire Knight up for her speech, please? Hi, um, I'm running for welfare officer because I have a really strong desire to help people. Um, I'm a good listener and having had problems in the past which I've overcome thanks in part to other people and the support I've received at Leeds University, I feel that it's my time to give something back. Um, I believe in our union. I feel that I've been supported by it throughout my time here and I want to help it continue to be a great service and experience for all those involved in it. Um, as an LGBT member, I feel it's important for me that we have a representative in the exec uh, because I feel that it will help in running the union. Um, having come through um, the experience of coming out and um, being gay, it's really important that um, there's a representative in the exec that people can look up to and inspire, and I can inspire other people to do the same and feel more comfortable with themselves. Um, basically, what I want to achieve is um, stronger support uh, services for all students at Leeds University. Um, I want to improve the counselling service and raise the profile of the Student Advice Centre because I think it's a really important um, service, but it needs more recognition in the university. Thank you very much, Claire. Next, can I have Grace Olney, please? I just want to start by saying how great I think the support at Leeds University really is. It's amazing. I think that... So. <laughs> is that better? There we go. Okay, I think there are just a few practical things we can do to make help more accessible. So things like looking at the self-referral form for student counselling, making a second shorter one and making more students feel able to go to the counsellor when they need it. I've tried to be really practical with my policies, so with sex I'm focusing on really practical things like getting the facts out there, getting STI testing available in the union and incentivising it so people have an excuse, if you like, to go and get an STI test. Another thing I really want to bring in is an online food forum. I want to get Leeds cooking. I think it'd be a great place for people to share recipes, vegetarian, gluten-free, dairy-free, things like that, and also different cultural recipes. I think it'd be a great place so people can learn to cook. Um, you can read the rest of my ramblings on graceonly.com, so get Grace on the case. Thank you very much. Um, next, can we have Vicky Scott, please? Hi, I'm Vicky. I'm running for welfare because I want to make sure that you're safe, you're healthy and you're happy. Safety. I got mugged in Leeds last year, so I really get how important it is to feel safe around where you live. So I want to increase the service of the night bus so that it runs from as soon as it gets dark. I also want to lobby the police so that your safety remains a priority around Hyde Park and Woodhouse. Your health. I've worked a lot with mental health, so I really understand... Oh, <laughs> so I understand the barriers faced and there's no reason why your mental or physical health should impact on your uni life. So on a campaign to increase awareness and reduce stigma. Your happiness. I want to set up a sort of coffee hour so that anyone can come and chat about any issue, big or small. And I want to make sure that the services in our uni are available to everyone. So that it's welfare, welfare. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Next, Jordan Webb, please. Hi everyone, uh, working with vulnerable people over the last 18 months has shown me how having the right support can improve somebody's life. Both the union and the university offer amazing services, yet students are often unaware of them. As a user of these services in the past, I can appreciate the huge amount of work that they do, and more needs to be done to enhance them. So as well as implementing my own ideas, I want to promote the existing ones further to ensure that every student has support. So personal tutors need training on how to refer students in need. The other universities in Leeds need to work closely with us on Nightline and the stigma surrounding mental health needs to be abolished. I want to be a voice for our members. I'm not a politician. I'm here to make sure you're all represented by your union. I want every single student to have the support they require, the security they need and the happiness that they deserve. Thank you. Next up, Susie Biggs, please. Hi, 
Hi there, I'm Susie Biggs. My manifesto explores some really big issues, but the main thing they each have in common is access. Access to reps, access to support, access to contraception, and access to advice on how to keep yourself safe. I don't want students like me to live in a mouldy house for two years before realising that they could have um, looked at the Unipol rating first. I don't want to take um, I don't want it to take a burglary for students to find out about the Immobilise scheme, at which point it's too late. I don't want students to reach third year and wish they had spoken up about their lecturer's impossible to understand accent, a badly taught module, or to consider whether their course was even right for them. I want every student to be aware of what services the union provides before it's too late. Thank you. Next up, Jacob Mizoran, please. Hello everyone, thanks for coming, thanks for watching. Um, I'm Jacob, I kind of, uh, I've started a campaign for good sex education in schools and it's sort of on Facebook and I've got a website and everything and I'm somebody who can start projects but also allow them to carry on going. I'm all about sort of communal things happening and uh, I really like the common room and I kind of want to develop it as a space where people can meet each other. Um, I want there to be a notice board so people not in societies can more easily make friends. I see friends as a way of uh, people getting support. Um, and so in the same kind of vein, I want to uh, have sort of an online support resource where people can sort of share their advice from each other. I feel that your friends are one of the best places to get your support. Um, yeah, I want to make that more, uh, more easy to get to. <laughs> well, that's me. Vote for me. Woo Next up, Sabrina Pools, please. Hi, I'm Sabrina. I'm currently a second year politics student and I have a passion for the provision of good quality and effective services both nationally and on a union level. Okay, shall I start again? Hi, I'm Sabrina. I am currently a second year politics student and I have a passion for the provision of good quality and effective services both nationally and at a union level. There are 30,000 students here and they deserve to love their time at Leeds. My key belief is that the role of the welfare officer is to enable every single student to make sure their own decision to make their own decisions on their own health, happiness and safety which are positive and well informed. To do this, I want campaigns to have just as much substance as they do marketing. I want to make sure that every penny of your money through my time and union resources is well spent on improving services, especially Harriet's new support groups and your access to them. I intend to work with outside service providers so that services are not always union based. I particularly want to liaise with taxi companies to extend the current student car payment system to all hours of darkness and from any location in Leeds. I also want to have a system where students can easily sign up to NHS C cards and therefore have access to free contraception, again from locations all over Leeds. Ultimately, you need more power to seek help and advice from the union, the university and the NHS on any issue that you may experience during your time here, and I intend to give it to you. Thank you, Sabrina. Next up is Katie Siddle, please. Um, I'm going to tell you a bit about my experience and a few of my ideas. Um, first of all, I've got experience being a Nightline volunteer and a Nightline committee member, and I've worked with the council in this instance, which will help me when I work with the council if I become welfare officer. I've also got uh, experience on the RAG committee and being a volunteer. Um, I've taken part in mental health awareness campaigns, and for three years now I've worked to raise money for students who can't afford to come to university. Uh, a few of my ideas are, uh, in terms of safety, I'd like to en encourage students to use the night bus. I'd like to get more cycle lanes across Leeds, and I'd also like to keep maintain a strong police presence on the street. Um, I'd like to push forward the mental health, um, victim support, and eating disorder support groups. And I'd really like to um, maintain consistent support across departments and uh, remove stigmas from STIs. And that's it. Thank you very much. And the final candidate for the welfare officer, Vanessa Hawes, please. Hi. You've seen our campaigns, our posters, and our promises around campus. But this is nothing without the right exec officer who puts you first. 
You can trust me to deliver on my manifesto. I'll work on mental illness awareness, STI testing, drugs education, employment support and getting you home safe. I am honest, proactive and I love our university. We have a fantastic union. I want to protect and enhance this, breaking down any of those inevitable barriers that can prevent you from loving your time at Leeds. Thank you very much. I'm um, just going to remind him that we're now going to the question time. I have a couple of questions I'm going to ask here, but if you could talk clearly and slowly with the microphones closed, that'd be great for the people that are watching at home. So first question, I'm going to start with Clear. Um, students are so used to safe sex and drinking messages, they tend to switch off. How can you connect to students without sounding too preachy, yet still managing to convey a strong welfare message? I think that it's important to recognise that it is something that um, people... Uh, engage with like people have sex and people drink and I think it's important to realize that it is something that um, is going to happen and we shouldn't tell them not to but we shouldn't condone unsafe sex or binge drinking um, and I think that the way to do that is not to come up with gimmicky messages because people will just think that it's like irrelevant to them and we shouldn't treat them like children either so I think we just need to um, make people understand that we know that it happens but that we are there to help them if they need any support with it there's a microphone there for um, yeah, I definitely agree. It's not the way to go about it is to patronise students or even deny that these sort of things go on, but definitely just to um, approach it in a realistic manner and have policies which work with students and not against them Hello. Oh, okay. I think it's important not to be like, don't do this and don't do that, but just to encourage people about what is there, what they can do, and just remind people, we're all adults, we all know how to be responsible, but just remind people what support is there. I think that's what we need to do. Thank you. Jordan? Um, is that working? There yeah. we go. Um, I don't think that we should stop any... any um, campaigns like this, it, it still, we still need to make students aware the, about safe sex and about safe drinking. Uh, I think it's more important about letting students know the support that we offer behind that, so letting students know about where they can get free condoms and where they can get advice on binge drinking. Thank you. Next over, Vicky. Vanessa, sorry. <laughs> Um, I don't think current campaigns are patronising, but I also feel, even if they are, is it, does this even matter if it just saves even one life? Um, we need to make campaigns proactive and positive, and basically just encourage a conversation about these issues. We can't do anything unless people have the confidence and the ability to talk about these things. Thank you. Next, Sabrina. Uh, I think campaigns are important, but we need to make sure they're actually effective um, because valuable time and resources and money are spent on them. So we need to make sure that as many people get good messages as possible in the most effective way. Jacob? Hi. I agree with both Vanessa and Vicky that it should be a conversation, but also the information should be easy to kind of get hold of. So um, I, want, I want there to be like... I want to sort of include students and sort of respect students as a source of information. And um, like the reason somebody might not sort of go through using the safe sex they might want to would be because of other pressures. And the only way to get to those issues is to have an actual conversation about it. Whereas like information that you really need needs to be clear and it can be just information. So I want there to be sort of like posters that, that succinctly say the individual, like the, where the services are that you need when you need them. Katie? Uh, I think many of the other people have covered the kind of thing that I would say, but just to reiterate that to me, uh, everybody, well not everybody, but many students drink, many students have sex, and the, if, if we all do this, or many of us do this, then we need to remove stigmas attached to them, uh, especially at sexual health, because, um, you know, th this is people's lives, many people will get STIs, and they should not be joked about, so that's kind of, I would like to work on this. Brilliant, thank you. And finally, Grace. Is this work? Yeah. <laughs> 
So one of the things I really want to focus on is the actual facts rather than just gimmicky campaigns. So with safer sex, making facts accessible to people, things like condoms don't always protect against STIs, things like it takes two weeks for chlamydia to show up in an STI test. These kind of facts I think people really do need to know. Another thing I want to do is get STI tests available in the union, but to encourage people and to almost give people an excuse, because some people do find it embarrassing. They shouldn't, but they do. So as an excuse, everyone who gets an STI test at Leeds University will be given a raffle card with a number on it. There'll be monthly raffles with prizes from local businesses. This will promote local businesses and also give people an excuse to go and get tested. Lovely, thank you very much. The next question is going to be, should the union increase CCTV around campus and its own businesses? And I'm going to start with Vicky, please. Okay. It's not where... Okay. Oh, dear. Um, increasing CCTV. I mean, as I said, I got mugged, so I know that safety is a big issue. But at the same time, we don't want to all be watched all the time. So whether it's just making us feel safe with increased police presence might be a better idea than CCTV. But, yeah, I think certainly CCTV. And what was the other thing, sorry? Um, no, it was just CCTV around campus yeah. and its own buildings. Yeah, and the round genie is a good idea, but I think it needs to be hand-in-hand hand with other things as well. Brilliant, thank you. Next, can I go to Katie Siddle, please? Um, I would also say that uh, while CCTV around campus, um, a more increased uh, amount of it would be good, it's... It's really more about um, encouraging people to use the night bus, um, trying to maintain a strong police presence on the street so that people don't feel watched but they do feel supported by the things that are already in place in Leeds for them. Thank you. Vanessa? Um, it's something that I don't think many people are aware of, just the sheer quantity of CCTV cameras that are around campus. Um, so in that respect, like, there is good coverage, but there's been so many um, thefts in particular it, over the revision period, a number of people who got laptops stolen, these sort of things. So I do think we should increase CCTV in places like the library and computer clusters. Um, I mean, that's more to protect people's belongings more than walking around. But I do think in terms of walking home at night after fruity, that sort of thing, we do need a bigger security presence. Um, again, not so people feel watched, but just so they feel safer. Brilliant, thank you. Sabrina? Uh, I think we do need more security around campus and I think CCTV is very important, especially if a crime is committed and you want a conviction in court. You can actually have footage to prove it happened and I think that's very important. Um, but I do agree with other people. We do need more um, security, more police and other things as well as CCTV. Brilliant. Jacob? Yeah, I can see... Why me? <laughs> I, can, I can see like three like, cameras in this room. It feels like there probably is quite a lot of CCTV cameras around and it seems that it's very much about sort of catching people after something has happened. I think we have to do maybe more like before the fact and um, if there are sort of like inequalities between different people living in Leeds then that's going to be something that we should like do something to kind of you know, increase sort of like community good stuff, basically. <laughs> like Unity Day happens um, on Hyde Park during summer holidays. I feel like something like that could happen um, during term time. So students can meet, meet local people, local people can meet students, and like we should worry about crime a little bit less because we know people around us who can support us and, uh, yeah, protect us. Thank you. Claire? I think making sure that uh, students are streetwise is really important, so trying to prevent things happening in the first place. But um, I also um, think that uh, we need to protect the equipment and the um, sort of stock and stuff we have in the union and in the uh, rest of the campus, so CCTV is important to be able to find out who's um, taken stuff if, or vandalised stuff if that does happen. Can we go to Grace? I think if CCTV makes people feel safer, that's great. But personally, I'd want to look into how effective it actually is. Because I know a lot of people, if they're going to commit a crime, they are actually going to cover their face anyway. So I would need to see how effective that was. Personally, I think larger security presence rather than actual CCTV would be more effective in that. Jordan? I think the CCTV coverage that we've got on campus already is extensive enough 
Um, I think it's more about making people streetwise, so making sure that people are aware of the knowledge campaign and making sure they're aware of, of the potential threats and dangers that, the, that, can we, that we can have on campus. And then Susie. Very much a similar thing, really. As we said, CCTV can only be a good thing, but it can also be extremely excessive. What I do think I agree with Jordan is that um, promoting things through the knowledge campaign can definitely help people know how to look after their property, know how to keep themselves safe. Something that I'd like to put in place is sessions which do this early on in the year so that people have those systems in place, like the Mobilize, for example, and knowing what best security measures to use, knowing best what houses um, to choose in terms of security. But on campus, I think certainly in IT clusters, etc., they should be really, really good to CCTV presence in those places. Thank you. I've just had a question come through, through on Twitter, and I'm going to direct this at Katie first. Um, on the back of sort of this student muggings earlier this year, what are you going to do to raise awareness of safety to freshers living at accommodations such as Montague Bird, Burton when they move in? Uh, this, for me, will involve um, going around each of the halls, uh, having talks with students, um, making them feel safe, but also aware that there are a few tip, the few things they should do to ensure their own safety. Um, this would be something that I'd really like to do, and I'd, I'd put a lot of effort into because when you come to Leeds, it's a new place. Um, you could be from all over the country and the world, and realising a few steps that you could take to keep yourself safe will be a big thing for me. Um, a lot like Katie said, uh, going and actually talking to them, I think also information in freshers' packs, encouraging them to look after each other when they're in groups and they go on a night out, making sure no one's you know, thinking, oh, I'm a bit too drunk and would have walked home by myself now type thing. Also raising awareness of the night bus and the fact that it is there because I think a lot of people aren't even aware of it. Um, so making sure people know about that and how to use it. Thank you. Um, Jacob? Yeah, I think first year is generally really, really hard. And I think that um, something that is difficult um, is, is, is being unfamiliar in the city. And um, I mean, this is, this is true for exchange students and um, sort of people who come here to do masters. So a lot of people can be unfamiliar with Leeds. And I think that we need um, a, a big sort of like welfare overhaul of the whole sort of process um, so that you can meet people who can support you um, no, no people are about and also so you can be introduced to services like the night bus more effectively um, I think that in Leeds like when I arrived it was it seemed to be mostly about me going out and getting wasted which is pretty good but we need sort of like the other side of that really needs to be there needs to be sort of a master plan and I, I want to do that thank you Susie um, I think knowledge about safety really starts in halls and I think a lot of students in halls feel very, are very secure, you know, they're surrounded by barriers, but I spoke to some students in Lupton and they informed me of all these rumours that have gone around about people climbing over the fence, etc. And I think they do need to know that even though they are in halls, they are still, um, there are still possible threats out there and not to be leaving their windows open and I think feeling too safe is anything dangerous when later you'll be moving into High Park and Headingley where we do have extremely high crime rates and I think people need to be informed early on so that they know how to um, back protect themselves later on when they're in the community. Jordan? Um, being in halls is the first time a lot of people are independent and it's, it's the first time uh, people are aware of their own personal safety. Um, again, knowledge is a fantastic thing that the union has in place. It just needs more awareness and it needs more promotion throughout halls. Rather than just a leaflet you'll get in the box, it needs to be p people physically going to the halls and making people or making students aware of the, the services that knowledge offers. Vicky? So I think we need to, without scaring freshers, we need to make sure that they do know that they need to just do basic security measures, like not letting strangers into their halls, making sure they know when to expect their flatmates back so that, that people don't go missing and stuff. And um, we need to make sure that people know about the things like the night bus and about like um, campus security. Um, we just need to make sure that everyone is aware of what to do, how to stay safe, and what to do if something does happen. Sabrina? 
Uh, I think it's very important um, that we do approach um, safety as a very big issue early on in Freshers' Week, especially as people have a very different backgrounds, and some people may even be drunk for the first time, alone in a city for the first time, and that kind of thing, and they can be very vulnerable. Um, and I think we need to advertise um, services like the night bus, etc., but we need to remember that those students are actually more vulnerable off campus, say, on a night out or when they're walking back from a part-time job in the middle of nowhere. And um, we need schemes such as the student card payment scheme where if they end up you know, feeling vulnerable, they can get out of the situation, but they also know what to do in the situation through education. Vanessa? In terms of university accommodation, I personally feel that Montague Burton and the Otis would be the ones that I'd focus on first. Um, it's so difficult because they are so close, and yet this is where the bulk of the, acts, the muggings and instances has happened. There are things we can do, like the walking bus, shuttles to and from uni, but the problem is that these things are short-term solutions and that, unfortunately, they're not sustainable. Um, so to echo the previous candidates' responses, we do need to go around and personally talk to students. We don't want to waste budget on things that aren't going to be effective. So the first step is to go around and speak to freshers and find out what makes them feel safer on an individual basis and act accordingly. I think making sure that everyone feels as though they're safe and not feeling vulnerable is a really important step because then they're more likely to walk confidently and not um, be victimised. I also think um, freshers' packs are really... Um, a really useful way to get people to know about um, aspects of safety and maybe something like giving away free or really cheap padlocks, things like that, would be quite a good idea. I think also um, making people aware of the fact that if you put on Facebook certain information about yourself that you're more likely to be targeted and people need to be aware of that too. Next question, I'm going to come to Vanessa first on, and it is, students are swarming with lots of different messages on a daily basis how do you intend in getting across any welfare messages in a way where people will actually care and listen? Okay, um, in terms of my experience, um, I've been student brand manager for a number of big companies. I've been marketing manager for a festival. I do do marketing in my job. Um, so I think the first thing to do is just to get a conversation going about many of these topics, in particular things about mental health. In terms of mental illness, it's, it's a topic that people are often too scared to talk about because they don't understand it entirely, the full spectrum of it. So the first thing I would do in terms of these things is a marketing campaign. Things beyond posters and flyers, events and interactive things that inspire discussion and get people asking questions. Let's go to Katie. Um, yeah, I'd also reiterate um, the importance of a marketing of a, any campaign that you, that you put out there. Um, it's important that students uh, get the clear message, and that there's, and that, but they know where to find out more from as well. Um, I would also um, try and sort of build up a team of support people who could go around speaking to people. Um, when they're in computer clusters or when they're in an area where they're just sat playing on their phone, uh, going and talking to people and really being on a level with them, uh, to me, would really help. Thank you. Claire? Um, I think um, interactive services are very, very important. I think going up and talking to people, even as they're just walking past the union saying, did you know you can go to the Student Advice Centre for whatever reason, um, and then and, um, is, would be a really good idea. Um, I also think that um, you need to target people at the right time. So if it's to do with student housing, target them when they're looking for housing rather than doing it at the beginning of the year when they're not thinking about it or at the end of the year when they've already sorted it. So I think the right time is really important for everything as well. Vicky? Um, I think any campaign needs to be responsive to the issues that are occurring throughout the year. It needs to be simple and clear, and it needs to be personal, and not just everyone doesn't um, encounter the same issues at uni, so it needs to apply to individual people. Um, it also needs to be, like, the answers need to be clear, so you need to know where you can find the support, and so on. Grace? Um, like a lot of people said, I definitely think campaigns need to have a clear message, make it very simple, and I think it's very important to go out and actually speak to people face-to-face -face rather than just having loads of posters. You need to find out what people want. 
as well. Um, it is obviously very, very hard to engage some people. If they don't want to get involved, you can't make them. But I think just face-to-face -face interaction and also the use of Facebook, maybe make a video, try and get that spread around Facebook, things like that. Try and reach people in as many ways as you can. Jacob? I, I don't think it's just about direct messages, like just being sent out for people to receive. I think, um, as people have said, it's like the conversation is really important, and that. Um, but you need places for those conversations to happen. I feel that support groups that, have, that are sort of happening now, but also new ones that people might want to set up are, are one thing. But also, um, I don't know, a, a set, putting out a tent in Freshers' Week that's like a chill-out tent people can go to and talk to each other can be a way that, that makes the environment somewhere where people can like sort of more easily get hold of the information that they need because it's getting passed around better. Um, yeah. Sabrina? Yeah, um, I agree with many of the things that other candidates have said. I think we need to move beyond just posters and flyers. People hate being given flyers constantly around campus. People just walk past posters. Um, we need to put um, the advertising of campaigns into places like the front page of the portal maybe and you know, other ways where people are going to see them just in their day-to-day -day student lives and it's going to be more effective. Thank you. Um, Jordan? As effective as a conversation may be, the, um, a lot of the welfare issues often have a stigma attached to them. In, in the short term, the, the stigma is still going to remain. Um, so it's more important to utilize what, what the union already has, so working through Facebook and through Twitter and directing people to the right places online, we've there to afraid or embarrassed to ask someone face to face. Directing them online where to go can often be the answer. Hello. Um, although I think conversation with individuals is really important, you can only talk to a certain amount of people, it's impossible to get around everyone. So as a graphic design and marketing student, I would definitely develop a word of mouth campaign, something that actually interests people and they can see how it applies to them and how it can apply to their friends and how it can actually help them with their welfare. As I think if you c confront people in the correct way, they'll see that welfare is ultimately the most important issue pretty much in their lives. Thank you. I'm now going to open questions to the floor because I know we're coming towards the end of this section. Has anyone got any questions? Then I'll continue with the questions I've already had sent in. Oh, there we go. Can you have, get a microphone to this gentleman? Um, if, if you had to pick um, one area that you deem the most important that you could focus all of your attention to, what would you pick and why? So that's what area would you pick and focus most of your attention to if you had to and why? I'm going to start with Claire. Um, I think health support. Uh, health and support services is the most important issue for me um, because it's something that affects your daily life, it affects your degree, it affects every other aspect in your life, so I would definitely pick that. Grace? Yeah, I think raising awareness of the student support, uh, student advice centre and general support systems, things like that, because at the end of the day, with things like safe sex and drugs, you can find that information elsewhere. But awareness of what we actually have in the union is probably the best thing to focus on if you only have one thing. Jacob? I don't know, I'm just sitting here trying to think of like what's the one thing that's most important to me. I think like everything, <laughs> but <laughs> if I have to choose stuff, I, I feel like I'm going to go for stuff that's maybe more personal. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> To, I'd have to also say support um, throughout different departments. I think consistent support for students is what we need to achieve. Um, there's the Student Advice Centre, there's Nightline, there are uh, mental health societies. Uh, there are so many areas of support for all students and can make the difference between staying in uni and dropping out. And I think that would be it. Vanessa? Um, my priority would be a better all-round drugs education. Um, with the What the Flock campaign, a study on University of Leeds students, 17% of University of Leeds students take cannabis, 7% take amphetamines. It's not something we can bury our head in the sand about. It's something we need to hit head on and have a positive campaign about. Um, we need better all-round drugs education. I mean, 
Frank is a fantastic resource and it's one that people can go to online when they need it or just to generally look at. Um, but we need better all-round education. Students need to know that if they're caught in possession of drugs, they may not be able to get that job they wanted or get a visa to the USA. It's, there's wider implications than the ones that they know already. Um, I know Harriet this year has set up this fantastic resource when a consultant comes in on a Thursday with a drop-in session where you can just, you can just ask questions about drug use with, with, no, with nothing following it, no counselling, and just get genuine answers. Instead of advertising the facts more, I think we need to better market the fantastic services that the union already provides. Sabrina? I think, I think every welfare issue uh, is as important as each another. Um, I think the most important thing to advertise is all the support that the university and the union provide because at the end of the day our money is actually paying for it and it's there and we have some of the best um, support structures in the country and I think it's a crying shame when people end up dropping out of uni or having mental health problems because they don't know it's there right on their doorstep in the union. Susie? As a welfare member of the exec at a university, my main welfare issue would be tackling that head-on, so making sure that students are actually enjoying their degrees, because I think that can make so much difference. If you're not enjoying your degree, then that's so central to your time at university that you're not going to enjoy anything else. Um, I've got a statistic here that 30% of students feel they don't have a say in how their courses run. I think this should change through the use of course reps, using them more effectively so that every person can have their say, say what's worrying them, and hopefully create quite quick change with that. Jordan? <clears throat> um, integration and cooperation between different departments, not only within the union, but with the union and the university. Um, as I've stated in my manifesto, um, to train personal tutors on how effectively to refer their students towards a uh, student counselling centre and the student advice centre in the union um, is a lot more important. Okay. Again, I'd say support. We need to make sure that every student feels supported and involved at their time at uni because it makes such a difference to how you're going to experience it. Um, we've got so many great services, so we just need to make sure people know how to access them and that they have got support so that they can live their time here. Any more questions on the floor? So, can you get a mic to Dave, please? Have we got any noise? Can we have the sound up? One, two, hello. Um, a lot of the panel have been talking about how we should raise awareness of support services um, but in my experience it's the problem with it isn't the awareness of it I've been talking to quite a few people about this it's um, in terms of mental health issues it's the negative astigmatism attached to it that stops them going to the support services so uh, what would the panel do to remove that negative stigmatism so that's how would the panel help to remove the st uh, negative stigma attached with going to seek help for mental health issues um, so I'm going to start, I'll come to Grace. I know um, Harriet is currently doing some research into mental health issues and I know Time to Change have been doing a lot of research with university students and removing the stigma around mental health issues. So I really find it quite hard to say exactly what I could do without seeing that research. I think that's the kind of thing you really do need to have a, not, a lot of knowledge about before you kind of try and go head on and tackle it, basically. Jordan? Uh, it's, impor <clears throat> it's important to let students know um, how common mental health issues are. Uh, one in four people throughout their lives will suffer from some kind of mental health issue. Um, making statistics like that more well known can take the stigma away from, uh, from issues like this um, if, if people are aware of, of how many people are actually suffering. Clear? Um, I think a lot of people, even um, those who are campaigning uh, against, well, uh, uh, campaigning to cut down the stigma uh, surrounding mental health issues, um, I think that we often hand people with mental health issues a death sentence in a way that, um, be 
because they have some mental health issue, it means they'll never get over that at all in their lives. It's the same with eating disorders and it's the same with other issues. And I think we need to make sure that people realise that these issues can be resolved at some point. It might not be soon, but it will be resolved at some point and we need to make sure that everyone realises that and that will break down the stigma. Vicky? Um, I think like Jordan said, it's so common and so many of us can experience mental health issues in our lives and we just need to remind everyone that it's not something you need to be ashamed of. It's, and the way that we, do, we need to do that is by giving people a voice to talk about it and a platform that they can talk about it with each other to other people. Um, in my manifesto, I said that I wanted to campaign to um, increase awareness about mental health issues and reduce stigma. And I really think it's important, um, like you said, so that people know that they can access the services. Susie? I think, I think that in making the Student Advice Centre more accessible, it would hopefully make the Student Advice um, team see more of a friend that you're going to, rather than you know, some, something that might be quite scary to broach the subject of. So maybe by just having that raised awareness of the Student Advice Centre, people may find them more approachable. But I think it is quite a, a difficult one to call, as I said, without the research that is hopefully coming up. Vanessa? Um, to echo Jordan's, po Jordan's point, one in four people is such a huge percentage of the students. Um, and basically, we just need to make people feel that they are normal. Um, students need to be aware that the union is independent whilst working with the university is an independent charity and it will be completely confidential and that the support is there for their best interest. We need to make people aware of the full spectrum of mental illnesses from depression, phobias, OCD. There are so many different things that the term mental illness and mental health encompasses. So I think using my marketing experience I would just make this something that we can, we can talk about with maybe just like silly campaigns, some stress-busting games on campus during revision period, just something that goes, look, this is a normal topic, we can all talk about it. Jacob? Yeah, I agree. I, 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 don't think men I think mental health should be thought of like physical health. Everybody has a degree of physical health and a degree of mental health. And um, like, I think people, I don't know, a lot of people who would think that to try and gain support changes who they are, they become somebody who has depression or something like that. they have to think of themselves differently, but you don't, you're still the same person and like I think everybody, I, I don't think it's like four and five, I think it's everybody has, is like sad sometimes and stressed sometimes and uh, happy at other times. I think that it's, it's, it's more of a kind of blurry thing and uh, yeah. Push that. Sabrina? Um, I think when we all start university, we come from different backgrounds with different ideas of mental health, different experiences of mental health, different stigmas about mental health. And maybe one of the ways we can um, tackle this stigma is by um, doing something with freshers um, so that, and not just because of things they can look out for for themselves, but also in their friends. Um, I know from personal experience, um, sometimes. Um, it's the friends that can actually see the problems occurring before the actual person can. And I think if, if your friends know what to look out for as well as yourself, then maybe somebody somewhere will go, come on, let's get you some help, let's do something. And this is where we can go because we all know about it because it's advertised properly. And I think if, if we do that in first year, then hopefully it will continue throughout the rest of the students' university life. Katie? Um, I think the whole point of a welfare officer is, and then anyone on the exec, is to represent the ideas and the, the whole personality of the student body. Um, for me personally, I would like to represent um, the face of all different kinds of difficulties. I'm not ashamed to say that I've experienced mental health difficulties. Um, that goes with who I am as a person and I don't think other people should be ashamed of that and I would really like to be the face of a positive idea around the whole thing and like Ness said, um, little things as well, I don't know if any of you saw the campaign that, um, that Nightline did, giving out bubble wrap for stress relief, everybody experiences these things in, on one level, on some level and you know, if we can all be honest and open about that then we're we can go so much further. 
Thank you very much. That concludes the section for the welfare officers. Next up, we have the community officers after a short break. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome back to Leeds University Union Question Time Analysis section. These were your welfare officers who look after your happiness, health and support issues. With today, this year, we've had uh, nine candidates so far. We've had excellent ideas put forward by the candidates, such as the drug testing kits made available to be sold confidentially in the union. Uh, secondly, we've got the volunteers for high, with wearing high-visibility jackets, walking people back from the union late at night. Also, we've got STI tests to be made available. Um, we've also asked for the extension of the double night bus service. <clears throat> We've also have received some positive feedback from our live Twitter feeds. Follow us on Twitter with hashtag LeadLUU. We've also had some excellent uh, uh, reviews from our former welfare officer, Jack Shayette, who said that the candidates this year have posed down strong answers. So therefore, if you want to follow us live on Twitter, follow us on hashtag LeadLUU. Up next, we've got the community officers. Stay tuned. <laughs> 